Namaskar. Namaskar. So tell us your story, how you got involved with Ananda Marga and meeting Baba. I was about 17 or so. I'd finished high school, taken a year off to surf with some friends around Australia and um, got into a few mind-altering experiences during that time. And when we were surfing, mostly we were in fairly lonely places, the bush next to a beach, and um, often found myself at night um, sitting, sort of meditating or thinking about meditating. In the course of that year, I, I moved on from uh, different types of drugs and things and became a vegetarian, got more and more interested in meditation. That year finished and went back to start uni, which was a bit of a shock from um, what I'd been doing the previous year. Didn't really gel with that. Left uni about two thirds of the way through to go off surfing. Didn't really do it for me either and floated around a little bit. Came across uh, Ananda Marga, some friend at uni had said, I was interested to learn meditation, was looking around and a friend said, oh look, um, someone's giving a talk at uni and they teach meditation for free, let's go and check it out. So I showed up, the friend didn't show up, and for about an hour uh, nobody showed up, <laughs> including the people who were supposed to be giving the talk. Um, later on I was to realise that the, 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 there could be a pattern there. Um, and then I heard them coming down the corridor and I heard them talking to each other and they said, oh look, someone's there, someone's come. And then they started, they rushed into the room and um, the person giving the talk um, sat down and meditated for what seemed like ages and then went into this very long philosophical talk and then at the end said, do you have any questions? And I said, yeah, actually, I'm just here to learn meditation. Oh, great, great, great. So they arranged to teach me meditation at the Jabriti, Bhavanam Kevalam. And that was great. I really enjoyed that. I did that for a while. Um, and I was getting into yoga and fasting and become a vegetarian by that time. Um, the thing with uni was less and less interested in it. And then one day they called me up and said, oh, there's a monk coming to visit. Would you like to come? He's going to give a talk. Went along to that. That was really inspiring. I'd never met a person like that. Um, that uh, Abhi Devananda, who if people know, most people, Margie's know of him, obviously, he is rather unique. Um, and then at the end of that, one of the, the Margie said, oh, you know, if you want to, you can learn that personal meditation from him. He's around for a couple of days. I said, okay, fine, let's do that. Got initiated. That was extremely uh, life-changing for me. The meditation was just amazing, and I, I just wanted to do nothing but meditate all the time. Um, university went completely out the window. Uh, I got initiated in March and I moved into the Jabudi a few weeks later and then they had a retreat over in Melbourne uh, for Baba's birthday in May, so I went to that. And basically I decided, okay, I'm going to become uh, uh, um, an Acharya, you know. And, uh, I'd, I'd thought before of becoming some kind of yogic monk back then, from the experience of the initiation, I realized that this was, this was the path for me. Um, uh, and so I, I did that. I went over to do that. And uh, they said, oh, you've got to be an LFT first. We don't have a training coming up right now. Uh, we'll send you off with one of our most competent uh, LFTs so you can learn on the job from him. I forget his name, but he was, a, a, he was in Canberra at the time. <laughs> and uh, I used to have to spend a lot of my hard-earned money from my different jobs I did buying him Horlicks and, uh, on payday because he was doing some type of protest fast um, to get power out of jail. Yeah, so that was a great experience. I, I, I really enjoyed being there. That was me, wasn't it? Oh, that was you. Yeah, that was you. That's right. <laughs> and then... Um, Went to LFT training at the end of that year. That was another fantastic experience um, in Sydney. Very, very, very blissful and, uh, and um, you know, just going deeper and deeper into, into meditation and the whole kind of spiritual life and understanding more about Ananda and, and experiencing Baba. 
Uh, and then went off, posted as an LFT to New Caledonia because I could speak a bit of French or pretended to speak a bit of French. And, and I was there for about a year, which was another great experience. Came back and then I was LFT in Melbourne and then in the sectoral office for a while. And then I went to uh, a trailer training in Kathmandu. And I got to Calcutta and they said, oh, Baba's not here. He's on a DMC tour south of Calcutta called Bhubaneswar. So the first day the, uh, that I got there, he, it was a darshan. He was giving a darshan. And um, they asked me, oh, do you know Tandava? I said, yeah, OK, you came to a bit of Tandava before and everything. So we did that. And then Baba gave this darshan. And I was the only um, non-Indian there. Um, uh, and, and Baba gave this darshan entirely in English. Well, it seemed to me that it was entirely in English. And um, so it really had my attention you know, because I thought, wow, this is, uh, this is amazing. And what he said in that has always kind of, um, you know, stuck in my mind, you know, because it's the first time seeing Baba and it was all in English and so on. So he was speaking about Dharma and all the different aspects of Dharma Vistara and Rasa and so on. And he was talking about Seva and he was explaining all about Seva, doing service, um, but doing service in a way that your ego is not going to get big because you're so competent and clever at organizing things because he's inspiring you and doing service through you and you're doing service to him, so actually you're out of the picture. Um, and he was sort of building this up as being important. And then he, he sort of as he often did, he he would stop and then hesitate a little bit and then say, but actually you're yeah, just a tiny, teeny, tiny, insignificant person. What could you possibly do uh, for, for Parama Purusha? What, could, what could you, difference could you make? What, what service could you do? And he said, you're, you should always remember and you should never forget that whatever you do, you do only for the amusement of your Lord. And that should be your ideation. Uh, your whole occupation mentally should be that you want to amuse him, you want to see him laugh, you want to see him entertained, you want to see him happy, uh, and that's your life. And, and that was, oh, that was just, um, yeah, that was so inspiring. Uh, to have that and then after uh, they said oh um, you know you can have personal contact with Baba uh, if you like I said yes okay so they arranged that and I went in and Baba said Baba was extremely sweet and he said oh um, I think this is the little boy who was demonstrating some dance uh, earlier I said yes yes Baba that's the that's right. And he said, very good, yes, very good. And, and uh, what sort of little boy would you like to be? Uh, and I, I reached out at the time. I didn't know you're not supposed to do this sort of thing. I just reached out and, um, because I was sitting very close to Bella. And I put my hand on his hand. Um, and I said, Bella, I want to be your little boy. And he just closed his eyes. Um, and then he smiled and, and gave a, a, a blessing and said some mantras and, and uh, different uh, spiritual things. Anyway, I came out of there and I, I, I was, yeah, I was just, yeah, another life-transforming <laughs> experience. And then some daughters were there and they said, oh, okay, now, now you are home. You, you, are, you are with your family, you are, you are in your home now. And so do meditation, do sadhana, and then when you finish, we'll have lunch. And they had all this food, like a prasad that the Baba's cook had prepared for Baba, and then they, they fed me all this food. And, and, um, uh, and then I went off to a chariot uh, training in Kathmandu, again, a few more adventures because I had to fly back through um, Patna and, uh, anyway. So training went on um, and for a few months there. That was great. Also, very, 
very, very inspiring, and Kathmandu at that time was uh, just a fantastic place um, with the Himalayas around it and the whole kind of vibe. Um, uh, and finished training, and they said, okay, uh, you got to go to Varanasi to complete your training. So uh, we went there for about two weeks. Actually, we didn't do anything. We just did sadhana there. Whenever there were classes, the trainer just said, oh, you guys know all this stuff already. Just do sadhana, no need to come or anything. You know, we didn't really have an exam or anything like that. Oh, you know everything already. That's okay. Don't worry about that. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just do sadhana. Do more sadhana. Do more sadhana. So, okay. Just do sadhana there the whole time. And then went to, they said, okay, you finished now, off to Calcutta. You have to do some final things there, okay. And then I was in Calcutta uh, for um, a couple of months, actually, it took, uh, which was great because at that time the office was in Jodhpur Park and the routine was Bubba would come in the morning. Every morning he would come there and then come up and there would be a reporting session in his room uh, with the, all the workers and then he would come out and there would be a darshan in the in the small hall there and then they would go back to his quarters and then early evening we'd go over there and um, sing kirtan and there'd be field walk so that was the day that the days went by like that and it was just absolutely fantastic uh, um, to be there in his flow like that and initially we couldn't go to the reporting because we hadn't finished uh, the training. Um, and we were wearing the uniforms, but we, there were some final things. I think a chariot oath or something we hadn't done, some final exam we hadn't done. And anyway, it was New Year's uh, Day, I think, was coming up. Or, or it might have been because they'd finished Baba's new MG quarters, the construction was finished, and they wanted to have... There was a function there anyway at, at the new the first function at the MG quarters. And after the, the darshan at, uh, in the morning at Jodhpur Park, um, the GS at the time went around and he was telling workers, you know, to proceed over there in the afternoon, early afternoon for this program. And then when we got there, um, another Acharya who was the office secretary and who had a bit of a reputation um, at the time, confronted us and said, what are you doing here? And we said, oh, we were asked to come here for this program. Are you a chariot? Yes. And have you finished all the training? Yes, yes, Dada. Are you sure? Yes, Dada, yes, Dada. Okay, all right, so you can stay. And then Baba started the darshan, and the first thing he said in English was, was um, human beings. He was talking about the limitations of human beings, and he said human beings lack the capacity for original thought. And whatever you think, whatever you think or you plan, you think, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that, or whatever, this comes from Paramah Purusha. All original thought comes from one source, and that is Paramah Purusha. And then we thought, see, that's, that's why we're here, because he wanted us to be here. He put that thought there that, oh, we should go, so we went. And that day turned out to be just oh, so blissful. Baba did so many. It went on for a couple of hours at least, just there the workers with Baba. And at that time, Baba had just introduced Madhu Sadhana. Um, and later that um, became Avata Kirtan for, for Magu. So Avata Kirtan is part of Madhu Sadhana. But I was lying on this uh, sort of sofa, and he was on his side, and he had his um, uh, arm propped up under the side of his head, you know, with, on the elbow. And he just looked like those, you see those kind of artworks and things of um, uh, a divine being resting, you know. And that's what he looked like, really. That was the impression. And he's lying there and he's extremely blissful. And that was a great experience for me, not just, you know, spiritually, the experience with Bella and everything like that. But that feeling that if you have a feeling you want to do something in connection with him, then, then you know, 
he wanted to so do it you know don't hesitate don't doubt or whatever you know he had put that that idea there that desire there that plan or whatever it might be so uh, you have to follow that and um once we were uh, qualified at chariots then we life went to a completely different realm really a totally different realm and we were able to go in the recording with Papa when he would come every morning, which was so blissful. And then we would do Madhu Sadhana at night. And um, I can remember one of the first times <clears throat> I went in the recording with Baba. And we used to, when the recording would finish, we would do Madhu Sadhana, um, and then Baba would come out and do the Darshan. And there were so many people there, so many workers there, because it was Central RDS, so all the SSs were there from different sectors. And that was the first time I met Dada Karunananda, who um, was my SS in Berlin sector, and from whom I learned a lot. And we, it was so crowded in the room that we were actually in Dada's bathroom. Dada had a Western-style toilet in his bathroom. And um, Dada Karunananda was standing on the toilet doing kirtan because there <laughs> was just no, no room at all. And um, I'd taken off my turban and put my turban on top of the toilet there. And then when the, um, Marusana was finished and Baba indicated that he was going out to begin the darshan, the door to get out was just past the door to the toilet. So he walked past the door and then he stopped and, and indicated he wanted to come in to the toilet. Uh, so we immediately tried to all get out and he sort of looked the other way pretending not to see us. And we all got out, closed the door, uh, uh, and then I realized I'd left my turban on top of the toilet. And literally, uh, one second later, as I opened the door, and he had a massive uh, smile on his face, and he just stood there, and he said, um, excuse me, but I believe one of you gentlemen has left his turban on my toilet. <laughs> and I said, oh, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> very, very sorry, <laughs> very sorry about that. Uh, I'll just quickly uh, come in and get it, and uh, uh, yes, yeah. and he just stood there beaming, just beaming. You know, it was yeah, uh, yeah. So <laughs> that was, um, I think that was one of my earlier recording sessions uh, with Baba. Yeah, so very memorable. And and then from then on, every day was. Every reporting session would just be something special, you know, because sometimes Baba would be in a very, a very organizational mood, so there'd be a bit of an organizational theme, and sometimes you'd be in just a divine mood, so it would be really blissful, and um, things about sadhana and spiritual practices, and sometimes it would be, you know, exp explaining sort of mood, and he would be explaining things. You really never knew what it was going to be, but every day was just so fantastic and um, and special. I've talked about so many, many, many things um, about the different peoples and cultures, and about the history, of, um, geographical history of the different regions and everything. It was very long. It went. It went for more than an hour, you know. But and to be honest, I can remember a few things about London region. But I said, um, it's uh, they are the product of a uh, combination of different uh, um, ethnic and racial um, groups because you know the Vikings were there, the Romans were there, and so on and so on. And genetically, um, the end product of such a thing will will, ha will be very high in intelligence. The brother said they're extremely intelligent, but extremely conservative, extremely conservative. Um, and he, yeah, I, 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 I can't remember much more than that because, to be honest, I wasn't really listening. <laughs> I, wasn't really, I wasn't really there to... To um, know, know all those things, so I was just there to be with that. We were so close to Baba, was sitting on the floor right at, right near him, and yeah, we were just, we, that was the experience, really. Um, and uh, yeah, so two months or so there, was, uh, and every day was just, uh, yeah, 
spiritually intoxicating, really very, very nice uh, experience. Um, very intimate moments. That's that's what it was all about. Um, I mean, that that's the whole point of being in an organisation with Bala and having the reporting and everything. Is that that intimacy, that closeness, that, and getting closer and closer and closer and more intimate. Um, yeah. So quite a few different reporting sessions. Um, uh, our Dharma Miksha, that happened during the Minority Berlin sector. That was an amazing spiritual uh, experience too. Um, Baba is all workers and, and Magis, uh, LFTs and so on. If you were a worker, you'd be in in front of Baba in the reporting and then at the end of the reporting Baba would do Dharma Samiksha with a couple of people depending how much more time he had <clears throat> and then um, he would start off and he would say um, there was a bit of a formula there he would say uh, um, do you know 16 points well you couldn't really say at that stage you're a Navadu so that no, oh, you'd read a bit about it or you'd heard about it somewhere so he had to say yes you did know it, and then the next, then that was it. You were you were trapped, and so the next question was always, well, why don't you follow it strictly? Um, so, which you couldn't deny either, you know. So, you were really at his mercy. So, the the, the wisest thing to do was surrender before you even stood up to be to be very surrendered. Um, and then he would scold you for not being strict about sixteen points. And then, in my case. It was quite interesting for me because I, I'd had a kind of a, when I first became interested in meditation, I was doing yoga, you know, quite strictly, all asanas and things. And then the first time I went to India, I kind of observed that mostly the Indian batters very rarely would you see them doing asanas unless they were getting up extremely early in the morning doing it and I didn't notice. And then I started to think, oh, yeah, maybe asana's not really part of the package so much. And, so as time went by, I was paying less and less attention to asanas and more to sadhana. And uh, and when I was going for Dhamma Samiksha, I thought to myself on the way there, I thought, look, if Baba brings it up, that asana is part of 16 points, you should be more strict about that. If he directly scolds me about it, then okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be more strict. And if he doesn't, I'll kind of carry on. <laughs> and, and so he is... In true style, Baba handled it in a totally unpredictable fashion um, and didn't really give an answer to either of those things. But anyway, so he, 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 he had his stick, you know, he, he would hit you with the stick. And then he took the stick and he started waving it. Uh, he told me to stand, to come closer and stand. I was standing in front of him so he could reach my body with the stick. And then he indicated, he waved the stick over the first three lower chakras and he said, these chakras, these are, these are um, animal, to do with animal, basic animal functions and dismissed them at that. Didn't, he touched each one with a stick, but he didn't say more about it than that. And then he came to Anahat Chakra, touched with the stick, and he said, this is the center of sentiment. And unless this center is awakened, you won't have devotional feeling, and devotional feeling is essential. And then, because Baba was sitting down um, slightly lower than me, and I was looking down at him, uh, he wanted to get to my uh, Vishuddha chakra, but he pushed on the tip of my nose, um, I forget the name of that little chakra there, to push my head up so he could get to the um, Vishuddha chakra. So he touched that chakra as well. <laughs> And then he got to the shooter chakra and he said something which I'd never, yeah, I'd never read or heard anyone talk about these bridges being associated with the shooter chakra. But he said, this is the center for those with a fascination for name and fame. And the way he said, pronounced the words name and fame was if it was the most disgusting thing he'd ever come across in his life, you know. And that had quite a profound effect on me at the time. <laughs> And then he went up to um, uh, the other two higher chakras, uh, tapped my head at each one, and 
talked about each one, one um, being the, again, which I prefer intellectual power, be more intelligent, be more intellectual. Uh, and then Sahasra Chakra, purely spiritual, um, and detail, some more detail about that. Uh, and then he finished, and he did prescribe some asanas, uh, and I said, oh, okay, not looking good for the asanas. <laughs> Um, he did prescribe some asanas, but then he said, okay, uh, come close, sit down and come close. So I was sitting in front of him, slightly lower than, come more close, more close. And I was so close, he was sort of on a, a low wooden cot almost thing, you know, and um, I was so cl- I couldn't get any closer. I was touching already. I, my, my legs were underneath it and I was touching so closer so close already and he said come cl- more close more close and I was so, cl- so I couldn't physically get any closer than I was and then I, I, I honestly can't say that I recall him saying embrace me but I had a feeling overwhelming feeling to embrace him and I just did so I reached up and I put my arms around him and I just held held so tight and more of a hug, really, than a, an embrace. And, oh, I was just, yeah. Um, I don't know what happened in that time, actually. I can't, I can't really say. I just remember vaguely thinking, you know, when you look at Baba, he's so small to look at in stature. And I was thinking, he's so small and I'm hugging. He's so big, I can't hug. How can I get my arms around him? He to be huge, you know, and, and just overwhelming, uh, intoxicating, and, and then he, he put his hands on, on my head and did some blessing, and, and yeah, and then, then I stopped embracing him, and oh, just, yeah, and amazing, and at the time it was just like, there was only me and him in, in, in the world, you know, although there were quite a few people in the room behind and as uh, after the embrace I became more aware of people behind and they were you know, making different you know when Indian workers when there's some the vibration gets very intensely spiritual people you know you can feel it in the room and, and people were reacting to that and so on oh uh, yeah it, it, yeah so that was Dhamma Samiksha that was yeah, just amazing, amazing experience. Yeah. And then, um, then I had to go to the senior IDS. Um, and that was just an amazing experience the first time I went for that because I'd been to junior IDS before. I'd never been to senior IDS. And, and um, yeah, to be honest, I was a little bit sort of thinking, mm, this, could be <laughs> this could be intense, you know, because... Uh, uh, it can get intense, and, it, and the thing about it, it's in, it is totally unpredictable what will happen in that room uh, once power starts. You really, no one has a clue what will happen. And um, anyway, it started, and it goes by, I think, the vanilla sector first and then silver sector. So vanilla sector went on for quite a while, and then Baba said, oh, it's too late, I'm tired now, and we stop. And then the next day we came in, and Baba announced uh, we're about to start and Baba looked at GS and he said oh, Suva Sector, that's already finished isn't it? And GS said yes, that's right Baba, well, okay well let's go to the next sector then <laughs> 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 and, and Didi and Anders Sampurna, she was the SWWS, she was there then and she looked at me and I looked at her and we both went oh, okay <laughs> that's alright and um, mm-hmm. another time like that, Baba had just introduced Prabhat Sangeet and we were at Ananda Nagar and for DMC and um, they quickly organized a meeting. All the Western Magis and workers have to come quickly in the afternoon. Okay, you've all got to learn the first five Prabhat Sangeet songs. So there was an Indian brother there who could sing and he was teaching us the song. And one Magi sister said, oh, Dada, could, could you translate it to English as we go along and then we'll enjoy it more because we'll know what we're singing about. There's no time for that. There's obviously 
he was under a lot of pressure that this all had to be ready for the Father's field walk that night, or else, or else he was in a, a world of pain, you know. So um, he said, there's no time for that, there's no time for that, just learn the song, learn the song, okay, all right. So we did. And then that, that evening, Baba at the Ananda Nagar at his quarters, there was kind of a, almost like a driveway thing, he would walk up and down and there was a gate at the end and often he, when he turned around at the gate, he would slow down and he would stop, he would say something and then he'd go back up and come back down again. So he was doing that. And then he, as he came down, he stopped and he said, do you know the first Shabbat Sangeet song? Yes, yes, we do, Baba. Go, oh, please, go ahead, go ahead go ahead and we had to sing that song and then he was up and down while we sing and then at the end of the song he would come down and he would explain the whole meaning in detail and then he said go on with the next song and then it went through these five songs and he explained all of them and then at the end he said so you know he always would say this about the song so do you like these songs um, yes, yes, of course. We love them, but we love them. Should we keep them? Should we keep them? Or should we tear them up and throw them away? Uh, or should we keep them? No, 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 but we have to keep them, we have to keep them. And then do you find that now you understand the meaning of the songs, that you enjoy them so much more? And we said, Father, that's just perfectly true, perfectly <laughs> true, Father, perfectly true. <laughs> And he said, that's very good, that's very good, okay, so very good, you know. <laughs> and then another time in the same uh, DMC session, it, you know, an in the guy in the wintertime gets a bit cold sometimes that night and early morning. So Baba was there and he said, oh, it's been a little bit too chilly, hasn't it? Um, not chilly like a hot and spicy chilly, but chilly like cool and uh, cold. And we said, yes, Baba, it has been a bit chilly, it has been quite chilly, actually. Yes, he said, yes, very chilly, very chilly, yes. And then the next, that evening, you could feel it was so much warmer, you know. And the next day, I was walking up and down, and he said, so how do you find it now? Is it uh, a little bit more mild, not so chilly, a little bit more comfortable? Do you find it like that? Yes, Baba. We find it's perfect, Baba. It's perfect. Oh, good. Yes, very good, very good. And um, oh, that reminds me of another one, actually. Early on, when, when, when we were there in, in Jodhpur Park, you know, becoming a chariot, I was doing a lot of demonstrations in that time. And he, he for quite a few sessions, he was on this demonstration about tamatras. And he would ask people, workers, to smell his hand or his, one of his feet and say, well, what, what do you smell? Oh, it smells like a rose. Oh, really? How can it be? It's a foot or it's a hand. How can it smell like a rose? Or they would ask, um, Baba would ask them to taste his uh, a, a hand. Or, uh, and, oh, well, how is it? Baba, it's so sweet. It's so sweet. Uh, uh, how can it be? It's just the skin. You know, it's just a body. And then he explained that everything emits tanmatras and you perceive them uh, and that through your senses and that gives you the experience of what it, what it is you're interacting with. But he said, actually, uh, Parama Purusha controls the Tanmatras. He can control the Tanmatras as he likes, as he wishes, as he desires, and you will experience whatever he desires you to experience. So nothing is as it, you know it's like he's saying nothing is as it seems you know everything can be whatever i want it to be at any time you know oh yeah it was just that was just uh, also quite amazing you know wow. and uh, another time in a, in a reporting session a similar sort of thing on sort of mental perceptions and things father said he was talking about 16 points again and he was talking about um a washing after urination and he, he was asking you know well he had one data and he was questioning him and saying oh, you weren't strict about this and so on so on. you should be more strict yes and then he was quiet and then he said uh oh, yes one are you also not strict about this is that true i said yes that's true and he and then he said you should be more strict 
understand, yes, I'm like, okay. And then he's quiet. And then he, he came back and he said, how do I know that? How do I know you're not strict about that? I said, Baba, everything is known to you. Nothing is secret. And he said, that may be true, but how do I know this about you? And I said, Baba, I don't know. I don't know. I can't explain. I can't explain it. And he said, I know because just now you yourself told me. You yourself just told me, just now. And I had, it's true, I'd been reflecting, when Baba was scolding that, I'd been reflecting in my mind, oh yeah, that, that, that when, I didn't, when I'm out, I, don't, I never carry Shoshman juice, so sometimes you have to go urinate, you don't have water, and so you don't. I was thinking that, and, and then he said, when he said, just now you told me, you know. So clearly, you know, I thought, oh, when you're there with Baba physically, don't clutter up your brain, your mind with this. Just be, make everything full of him, of him, thought of him, only ideate on him. Just that, that's all you, that's what, that was the message he was trying to, to communicate. I don't want to hear all this stuff about you not urinating. I want you to be immersed in me, you know. <laughs> that was the message. <laughs> and, yeah, so from then on, you know, whenever I'm in the reporting, I would just be ideating on him, or if you slip out, then just do Guru Puja over and over again. Uh, but sometimes it would be so hard because the, he would want to, he would single you out for a conversation, and then it became really hard to focus because... It will get a little bit crazy sometimes. Like one time, he 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 used to talk. He went through a phase of talking about all these flying animals um, who would come to um, report to him about different workers and things like that. So from super sector, it was the flying kangaroo. And one time, this flying kangaroo came to report to him about me. And the kangaroo, Bob was telling the story, you know. And the, the kangaroo said, "Look, I'm just a kangaroo." I don't know much, but, and he's an Acharya, he's an Avaduta, but I do know that it's time for sadhana, and he's busy talking. He's just talking and talking, and he's not doing his sadhana, and the time for sadhana is passing. And I'm only a kangaroo, but I know <laughs> that this is important, you know. <laughs> and, and, and he would go on just, you know, <laughs> uh, you don't know whether to laugh or cry because it's sort of... That's um, it's so entertaining, but you know he's making a point. You know he's clearly making a point. And then once he sort of felt that you got the point, he's making a point not just to you but to everyone in the room. You know that's how he did to do these things. Yeah. So you know you got it. You follow. Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, got it. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. Then another time he said, Oh yes, the flying tigers. Yes, from super sector. Okay. And then he asked me, Rajanananda, the, the, the flying tigers in super sector, do they prefer short pants or long pants? I thought, oh my <laughs> God, what, what, what can you say to that question? <laughs> and I, don't, I really didn't know what to say. And so I just went for the delay tactic. I said, Baba, uh, sorry, sorry, what, what? And Baba said again slowly and very clearly, Flying tigers in your sector, Suva sector, do they prefer to wear short pants or long pants? <laughs> 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 and I said, Bella, um, you know, the part of Suva sector where the flying tigers are, it's tropical. And they for, therefore they do feel more comfortable in the short pants. And Baba said, ah, oh, and he's nodding his head as if it's like a real, some sort of rational conversation, you know. And then he said, oh, I see, yes. And then he looked at me and he said, but have you ever seen them? And <laughs> I said, actually, Baba, no, I haven't. <laughs> but it's been reliably reported to me that they do prefer the short pants. You know? Oh, I see. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, and then this was this happened. You know, oh, I don't know how many times. You know, just totally bizarre um, conversations. And um, yeah, just but 
divine and, and you want to keep them going, you know, as long as you possibly could. When I finished training, but we had, I hadn't gone to the field yet, so in those days Bobby used to come to Jodhpur Park every day and then um, they'd be reporting in, in his office and then there'd be a, he'd give a darshan every day there. So because we'd finished training, we were technically a chariot, so we could go to that reporting, you know. And that was amazing because that was, he just introduced Madhu Sadhana and he was explaining all that, so there's all that sort of stuff. And anyway, one day we were there, and most of it, I was the only English-speaking person there, and most of it, they were talking Bengali most of the time, so I had no idea what was going on, but I didn't care, you know. <laughs> and then one day, he said something, and we were all sitting down on the floor, and then suddenly a whole lot of um, Indian workers stood up, and Baba said something to them, and then one by one they were sitting down. And then I turned to the one Indian daddy next to me and I said, oh, what's going on? What did Baba say? And Baba said, he said, Baba said, stand up who wants to become Avadut. I said, oh, stand up who wants to become Avadut. Yeah. And so I stood up. And by the time I asked him what it meant and, and, and then stood up, everyone else had sat down and Baba was like ready to move on to the next thing. And he turned around and there I am standing there with this stupid look on my face. You know? And he said, oh, what do you want? I said, Baba, I want to become Abu Dhu. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, aren't you Abu Dhu already? I said, no, Baba, not yet. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> and then, so that was the real life experience. And then the dream, I had this dream years after that. And, um, uh, and we were in the reporting. Mm. And, uh, in the dream. In the dream. And then um, the same thing happens. Like Baba's talking and people are standing up. And then Baba's saying something to them in Bengali. And then some of them are walking out, out of the room, and they're going. And I'm like, uh, so I turned to the Indian other next to me. I said, What's going on? What's Baba saying? And he said, <laughs> this is where it gets really a little bit weird, you know. He said, he's asking who, because the World Cup was on at that time, and mm. Baba's a little bit, Baba used to talk about the World Cup and football and that mm. every now and then, you know, because a lot of Indian workers are crazy about it. And he, he said, the Indian data told me that Baba had said, who wants to go and watch the World Cup? Stand up. Mm. And all these datas had stood up. And Baba had asked them each one, are you sure? Do you want to stay here with me or do you want to go and watch the World Cup? This is what this data is yeah. telling me. And those who said, no, I want to go and watch it, Baba had said, okay, you can go. And then he said, you should stand up. I said, well, I don't want to. The data said to He you. said to me, you should stand up too. I said, I don't want to watch the World Cup. He said, never mind, Baba will talk to you, okay? Stand up, stand up, stand up, can't stand up. And he made me stand up. And I stood up. And then Baba said, uh, do you want to go and watch the... No, he said, do you want to go? Do you want to get liberation? Or do you want to stay with me? And I was thinking, that guy <laughs> <laughs> set me up here, you know? And I said, Baba, I want to stay with you forever. And then Baba closed his eyes. And then he said, it is done. You will stay with me forever. Sit down. Wow. And that was a dream, wow. you see. And how weird is that? How the little twist in it, like the Dada hmm. conning me, hmm. Telling me the, all the bullshit that the, <laughs> Baba Shaki who wants to go to see the World Cup, and if they wanted, to, if they said yes, yeah. so it was Baba actually asking who wants to go and have liberation, who who wants to stay with me, <laughs> stand up, and then ask them again. So all the ones who wanted to go were standing up, and Baba asked them again, do you want to stay with me or do you want to go? And if they said they wanted to go and have liberation, Baba said go. Mm. That's what was actually really happening in the dream, but that Dada had told me, oh, they, Baba's asking who wants to go and watch the World Cup, you can go now. <laughs> so it was just a way to get me to stand up and have that interaction, you know, and say, no, Baba, I want to stay with you. 
I don't want to go and see the World Cup. But he wasn't even asking about the World Cup. No. He was asking me once. So, yeah. That was a bit of... Baba's Leela. Yeah, that was really classic. Brilliant. How many have heard about Ananda Maga? Mm. And of those who have heard about Ananda Maga, how many have come to become Magis and do sadhana? And of those who have become Magis and started to do sadhana and heard about Baba and know Baba, how many of those stay? Mm. How many are here today? Mm. You know, what about all the others who were... Who, 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 and go. Where, yeah, where are they gone and what's happened? And then Baba said, so how does it work? How is it? How can you explain it? Why is it that today here in Taipei it's me and it's, it's all of us sitting here together uh, and yet there are millions of people mm. around the world, so how can we explain it? And he said, it could be that one day um, in another lifetime far away on another planet we were sitting down together. <laughs> This is when Baba gets his, you know, weird explanations. It could be that, you know, he starts off like that, and then, you know, oh, here we go, you know, we're going off, <laughs> floating around somewhere now, you know. And he said, it could be that uh, we were sitting there together one day and, and we decided that um, we would all meet up again on that planet called Earth. And we would meet up there in the future at some time, and we would all be together there and we would do some work there for some time and then we would go somewhere else. Mm. And, uh, and that was like his explanation, you know, for, for, and it's as good as explanation as you, you could mm. come up with, you know, because how to explain, you know, why, why some people... Um, do what they do. Yeah. How, how, you know, people come and go, you know, and, and how to explain it and then how to explain in the next life, you know, what what sort of rebirth you'll have, you know, will, will you be with Baba again? Will you be born into a spiritual sort of family, environment, country or whatever or mm. what? No one knows, you know, no one can mm. explain all those things. And so when Baba sort of starts to, it's like when Baba explains about, the universe, you know, and, and that was, you know, his, his, one of his replies about that is that, well, it could be that Parama Purusha was feeling lonely, mm. and so this was all created as a, as his keep him coming, yeah, as his sport, you know, mm. the leela of it all, and so that's how he amuses himself. And um, there you go. Not particularly scientific or rational explanation, but you know, when he explains things like that, it's really, really nice, you know, because it's um, it's kind of human, you know. No, we oh, are human. I was feeling lonely, so you know, I sort of yeah. And I can remember when he introduced the Madhusana, you know, and we were we were um, we were in the downstairs in like gardens there and Baba was reclining on this sofa bed thing, you know, lying down and we were all just sitting around and then Baba said, yes, um, he gets, you can tell when he, he's one of these moods is coming up, you know, and the clue is because he lies down like that, you know, mm -hmm. so you can see, oh, we're going informal now, you know, it's mm -hmm. nothing, we just kind of hang out mm -hmm. and he said, yeah, one day I was thinking, Tantra, you know, we have Tandava and we have introduced by Shiva and we have Kirtan, which was introduced initially by um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah, but we've tweaked it, we've refined it a little bit, and then we have Koshiki, and we have uh, various you know, lessons of sadhana, and we have this and that. And I was just thinking to myself, oh, there could be something more, you know, there could be something more. <laughs> <laughs> and what, 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 what could there be? What could yeah. there be? Oh, and I was just thinking, and then I thought, Madhusana, yes. Yes, mm. Madhusana. Yeah. And then he just explained the whole thing, you know. And that, you know, when he does that, it's just so human, you know, and mm. so whatever he's explaining, just... You just sort of say, yeah, we'll go with that as an explanation, you know. 
it's just really beautiful. You know? Yeah, it was, in the end, it really didn't matter what it was, just it was just to have him saying something. Yeah, that's right, you know, and it was just, just the, you know, the mood, the vibration at that time, you know, mm. and you can just feel he, he just wants to be informal and relax with us mm. and just talk, you know, and uh, when create, he, create a relationship with us. I yeah, think. when he was like that, he was just, you know, so. Um, charming, you know, mm. just so charming, you know, overwhelmingly charming. And uh, I can remember, you know, how the Indian daughters took me a while to realize this, that this happens, you know, but um, almost all of them, even the, you know, lower posted young ones and everything, whenever they're leaving, um, they were leaving Calcutta to go back to the field, like after IDS or some program or whatever, they would all go and see Baba, you know, mm. physically. And they had to, and they, it's like they had to get permission from Baba to leave, like a spiritual permission to mm -hmm. leave. And um, it took me a while to realize that th they were all doing this, you know, and we never did it. Mm -hmm. And um, and then one day um, uh, they were going into, when I was in Berlin sector, and I was with Karun and Under and, and some other workers there, and, and they, um, PA came and said, oh, come on, come on, come in. And Karunala said, come on, come. And he dragged me in. And then I was lying on the bed in his bedroom, you know, with a singlet <laughs> and a lungi. Just a singlet, you know, with mm. that, like that. And he was just lying on the bed with a pillow and a fan and an air con. And, and then we were all just on the floor beside him there. And then Baba asked, oh, who's there? And then PA just said, who's here? And then I was like, ah, oh, okay. He didn't have his glasses on, he takes off. When he's relaxed, he takes off the glasses and everything. And then he's just lying there looking at the ceiling and sometimes closes his eyes, sometimes, you know, just, you know, mm. oh, such a mood, you know, such a vibration. Mm. Wow. Like, um, this is the Lord of the Universe mm. at leisure, yeah. you know. And Chilling out. Uh, yeah, and that's just, you just feel such a feeling of power there, mm. that, like a... Oh, it's amazing. And then anyway, we start to talk, and and uh, you have to talk, otherwise he gets a bit upset. <laughs> Waste my time, blah, 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 you know. And then there's a, oh, blah, blah. then they all start to say one by one, oh, blah, blah, I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow, and then blah, blah, blah. Oh, cha, okay, and that, you know. And yeah, and then Corinna just said, blah, blah, I'm leaving tomorrow, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. And then I, I just follow along, you know, and mm. I said, Baba, I'm also leaving tomorrow. And then Baba, he's just about to do something. And then he opened his eyes and he turned around and he looked at me. And I thought, I'm thinking, okay. They all said, I'm leaving Baba. Mm. All went okay. I just said the same thing. And yeah. here we go. <laughs> Give you the big stare. Get ready. And then just looked at me. But just like a absorbing, you just feel, when he does that, you mm. just feel like everything's just kind of ebbing away, you know. Mm. <laughs> and, um, and then he went back to look at the ceiling, you know, still had his eyes open. And then he just said, Why? And I just, oh, it just blew me away, you know. I just yeah. really, because it's, you can't answer, you know. Mm. Why indeed? Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're saying, I'm here. Everything is here. <laughs> Why? Why do you want to go, you know? Mm. Well, what, what's more important? You know? mm. And I, I couldn't answer at first, and then they were sort of going, you know. I oh, doesn't like, like. Silence. <laughs> yeah, awkward, awkward pauses in the conversation. <laughs> You got to keep the ball rolling, you know. And then I said, "Oh, oh, actually, it's not my not my decision to go." <laughs> and then he said, "Yeah, yes." And then he turned again and to look at me and said, "Open the eyes," and he said, "But you'll be back very, very soon." I said, "Yes, but well, surely." Mm. And yeah, that's so many times things like that mm. where. Normally, you know, the Western workers, a lot of stuff we missed out on, actually, mm. you know, just 
I don't know, you have to be philosophical about it and say, oh, Baba didn't want to do it for whatever reason, you know. Because if he wanted to, he could have. But then, every now and then when something does happen, you feel like, if we pushed a bit more, could we have got more sort of thing, you know. Because there was another time we just become able to do it and, and there were a group of us. And Keshavananda was the PA and I had quite a good relationship with him. And um, uh, we, were, we were hassling, they all asked, they all said, okay, we want to, we want to do Guru Puja in front of Baba before we go, in the room with Baba. And uh, because all the, we'd learned that all the Indian Abhidhuts who just become Abhidhuts, that's what they'd done. Mm. And so we said, why can't we do that? And Kashananda got all uncomfortable about it. And then he said, okay, talk to me later. And we just had to keep bugging him about it, which mm. we did. And then he finally agreed, you know, he said, okay, you come here at such and such time tomorrow and, uh, and we'll do it. And we said, okay, are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure, I'm sure, sure. You promise? Yeah, I promise, I promise. Okay, okay. We believe in you, we trust in you, okay? Yes, 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 okay. Right. And in that the appointed time, we were there. And, you know, like Garden Baba's bedroom is in there and there's like a little room outside there where mm. we used to have reporting and stuff. And then um, uh, we came in and he said, okay, quick, do, do it now, do it now. And we said, what? Here? You said we were going in the room. Do it now or you get out. Mm. And then we said, no, if you don't want to do it, go now, don't say anything. And then I was thinking, oh, later, later. You okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. And then we were just there doing Guru Puja. And he said, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. You know, just completely spoiling the mood. And we're just looking at him like, go do something else, you know. And he's just there. And then the door opened, and and you could see Baba's head, you know. And then Baba talked to him in Bengali or Hindi, I don't know which one. Uh, a glass jar, a glass of water. Can you get me a glass of water? No, Baba doesn't need to open the door. There's a bell. Mm. And when he wants something, he presses the bell, and Keshavananda goes in and talks to him, and then you know, and uh, and then Baba told him that and then Kajananda went off to get the glass of water and as he's going he's telling us mm. and we're just pretending we can't hurry up, hurry up. we're just going slower because we're still doing Guru Puja you know mm. and we're just going slower and slower and slower and Baba didn't close the door mm. and we can just see his head you mm. know there he's not looking at us he's pretending that we're not there right you mm. know like and we just side on we can see and he's just standing there with his eyes closed you know it was just and then when we went down and we did Sasang Pranam like that, he, we're looking at him still, mm. you know, and he just did like Namaskar like that. And, mm. and it was just like, and then he closed the door, you know, yeah. before Keshavananda came back. You know. One reporting I can remember, I wasn't even a Duke yet, and Baba said, it was at the end, and somehow he just started talking about something, and it was in English, and um, he said, oh, do they know? Uh, that if they want to, but only if they want to, they don't have to, it's not compulsory, but if they want to, they can. Uh, after they become Abhidut, uh, they can, their Ishta Mantra changes. You know. But it's not a compulsory thing, it's just if you want to, you can make that change by yourself. And I'd just become a chariot, actually. And I was thinking, why is Baba saying that? Uh, you know, I was, I think there was only me and one other a Westerner in the room. It was just a small reporting back in that, in um, Jodhpa Park, you know, that was where the room was so small. And uh, I thought Baba's telling that this must be some reason, so I would follow it. Mm. <laughs> if he didn't want me to do it, why would he talk about it? You know, he wouldn't have. And, uh, but just the way he talked about things, and then I mean, after we became a charity, then in another reporting session, he said, um, GS, the, there were four of us, I think, there, non Indian, who'd just become a charity, and, and we 
um, waiting to go to a posting. Do they know that uh, if they want to request, but only if they feel themselves that they want to do it, uh, they can request to have uh, like a, a meeting with me where I, I'll, I can try to, uh, you know, give them some small, small insight into the nature of their particular posting in the field and, you know, <laughs> but only if they really want it uh, uh, mm. because I, I know they're busy. I don't want to take up their valuable time. So do GS, do they know that? No one had told us about that, you know, <laughs> nothing. And Gia said, yes, uh, yes. They do. He has to say yes, they do. Mm. And Baba said, arrange it. Mm. Arrange it mm. for tomorrow. And they had to do it. And we were with Baba for like three hours or something that mm. time, you know. And they had to do it, you see. And then another time they, they were supposed to, that time there was a reporting every morning. And then after the reporting, there was a hole, little hole in the uh, Joppa Park. And um, Baba would come out there after the reporting and he would sit there and give a dasha. Mm. But it would never be in English, it would always be in Bengali. And then the um, Vijayananda and the PRS at that time, the big eyes, forget his name. He, they were supposed to translate it every day into English and uh, have it read out because there are a few foreign Magis, Western Magis mm. there as well, and have it read out in English the next day when everyone's sitting there waiting for Baba to come out. So that what happened yesterday, people were up to date. Mm. You know, and it never happened. They never did it. Mm. It was never done. And uh, so in one reporting, the reporting was just finishing, and then Baba said, suddenly out of the blue, he turned to them. No, he turned to us first. He asked us, so how did you enjoy the translation of the discourse from yesterday? And we were like, oh, tough question. <laughs> tough question. <laughs> what exactly we just, do you mean? <laughs> yeah, we just hesitated for a second, that's all. We didn't want to say, well, it never happened, you know. Mm. We just, because clearly Baba's on a mission here, yeah. he has some pro, something he wants to do, so we just, you have to just be in the flow, you know, very in the flow when you're physically with Baba, because things can escalate really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so you just sort of try not to set things off, you know, just try to be, mm -hmm. so we just hesitated, uh, and Baba turned to them, Two of them standing there and said, Was it done? Yesterday? Did you do the transaction? Was it read to them? Um, they know they, they have to admit, you know, mm. because they can see this is mm. what it's all about. Oh, no, yesterday it didn't happen. Did it happen before that, on any occasion, since they have been here? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Shuffling your feet. <laughs> You know, you wouldn't want to be in court with Baba as the barrister and prosecutor. Jeez, you'd be ripped to shreds. Mm. And and then he, they said, "Ah, oh, no, uh, time pressure." And then, that, yeah. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. And he went. And then he said, all in English for our benefit. And then he said, um, "Imagine how they feel sitting there day after day after day. They can't understand anything. How do they feel because of you?" So lazy, workless. Blah, 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 blah. I want it done tomorrow and every day after that. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. And they did after that. They did. <laughs> no choice. And then we, we'd see them and we'd say, forget that translation. <laughs> <laughs> but you, what you're saying, just imagine what the uh, also the, the deities and the sisters got left out on often. Yeah. But that, you know, Baba had to be careful about that because. Oh. Because of the yeah. sexual thing. You know. Bumble was very conservative about sex. Yeah. Bubba talked about many, many things, but I, I never heard Bubba say much about the whole sexual thing, you know. He, I'm sure he did to individual workers, but generally it was a, an area that he just left totally alone, you know. There was one time when he said, <laughs> I wasn't there, but when someone told me, Someone who was there, a worker who was in there, told me, and I was talking about um, how 
the male has like a the instinct instinctual tendency is to want something and go out and get it mm. whereas the female instinctual tendency or one of them is to, to want something and to attract it to bring it towards her and so this is like you will find everywhere in nature and everything and plants animals whatever people and so uh, it's like a natural phenomena the attraction mm. and searching attract and so on and then mother said I want to stop there I don't want to say more because if I say more um, some this is what they told me like I wasn't there I can't say for sure that that about how it's natural that um, people will start using that as an excuse in the future <laughs> but although it was natural and that's why you know and Baba said no that's why I had the affair yeah that's right see it was just natural it's just a natural thing happening Baba said no we're not, we're not we won't be tolerating that so we're not we're, that's not going there we're not going there not doing that conversation mm. um, but I know and how much like I was saying before how much momentum he's given everyone mm. and how much momentum he's given the planet and everyone on the planet we can't even begin to understand that you know no and also how he was he had to become so unguru like in his behavior yeah about the scolding and uh, all those oh, that's things. guru that's guru like you know that's true particularly for the tantric guru yeah, that's, that's really normal you know beating you up and and scolding you and tearing shreds yeah. off what you were you saying know. about when he you were there and he hit uh, someone in the face of and his teeth fell out. Yeah. He didn't hit him. He tried to hit him with a stick, but the guy stepped back and oh. Baba missed him. And then Baba almost fell off the little sofa he was on. And as he went down like that, he started to shout because he was so angry. And because he was down, then the dentures actually came out. I was right beside on the side, looking on the side. I could see the dentures come out. And Baba had to get the other hand and stuff him back in his mouth. <laughs> and so by the time he came back up and got the dentist back in and just explode. Everyone like took a step back because they could see it's just going to be a massive explosion. And then I can remember another time we were there. I always like to get on the side of Baba, you know, mm. because then it's so nice because you can just look at him and just get absorbed in him and fairly safely because you're not, not being in a direct line of yeah, fire. Yeah, you're not direct line of fire and sight, you know. Mm. So you're off on the side, you know, so you can just like mm. get really absorbed and and one time he was shouting at them, all the Indians about something and and I was just on the side like that to, to, together with one other daughter, Spanish daughter, and and another daughter, an uh, American guy who he was he he used to get really freaked out when Baba would get angry. You know, mm-hmm. some workers they would get really freaked out about it, particularly the first few times because it's pretty intense, mm-hmm. and you know workers would get beaten up and. <laughs> There's a lot of over dramatizing going on on the part of workers too, you know. Like you get hit and you have to make a lot of noise and you know, whatever. And um but still it was pretty full on. The energy was pretty full on. And so this worker was you know, I'd seen a few times he was uncomfortable that he was like, you know, get all tensed up about it. And then Baba's just suddenly stopped shouting and he turned around totally to look at the three of us and there was this massive smile. And then Baba said, a voice changed totally, everything changed, you know, vibration changed, atmosphere changed, everything. And Baba said, what did you think of that? Hmm? I said, Baba, this is very impressive, very impressive. Yes, 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 yes. And, you know, I'm the head of the organization. I have to do these things time to time. It's my duty, my responsibility, everything. So that's why. But uh, it's not the real me, you know. Went on and on explaining all the like almost apologizing for it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was so beautiful, you know, it was so nice. So like I felt like he was trying to reassure that Dada that mm-hmm. look, this is just a drama, this is just a play, and we're all just playing a role, and this is my role right now. So that's what I'm doing. And um, and uh, you're 
uh, a bit later on, you'll get involved in this drama with me too. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're talk, like, you know, you're talking to your little kids and explaining, mm. uh, we're going to school now. When you grow up. Yeah, mm. now we're going to school and, you know, like preparing them for it. And, um, yeah, he was just so... Go out of his way, you know, to, to um, make people feel at ease, you know. Mm. Yeah, really. That 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 was really special, you know. And then he said, "Oh, okay, um, I have to uh, bit pressed for time, and um, I have to continue now." Okay, so excuse me. And then he just turned around, and it's like he flicked a switch, and he's just suddenly ranting and raving at some poor Indian da da da, like he didn't stop, like he hadn't stopped at all. And, yeah, if I was very, um, you know, my my impression. Oh, Baba, all these little personal things he did. In a way, he was like super um, polite and um, uh, like beyond polite, you know, mm -hmm. um, like a host, you know, taking, feeling responsibility to all the guests, you know. Mm -hmm. In a way, like very much like that sort of like very traditional sort of hospitality mm -hmm. sort of thing, you know, very British almost mm -hmm. in the, the way, you know, but so charming, you know, so charming. And it would touch you so much, you know, when, when he would stop things and then kind of, you know, say these things and correct things, you know, for mm -hmm. you and do things for you. It was really... I can remember one time he sometimes when he particularly when he was getting older we'd be in reporting and he'd he'd sort of start dozing off you know mm. you'd see him and he his head would start to go down and then down further and then like that and so they'd just keep uh, doing it doing the reporting and whatever and um, uh, and just you just sort of got to see what where it's going to go you know mm. you know and then I was there it was my turn and and uh, the GS was just about to start hitting me with the stick. Usually Bubba wouldn't, wasn't doing it himself. He was when I first started going there um, very early on, but then he, the GS would do it. And um, the GS was just about to hit me with the stick. And then Bubba woke up hmm. and then sat up straight away and looked. And I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> to see where this could go, you know. It was just amazing when these things would happen because you really didn't know. You knew it was going to be good, but you just didn't quite know where, oh, it, was where it would go, you know. And um, so there was a bit of tension there and uh, apprehension or you know, whatever. And then I said, who is this? Uh, this is Saranjan Nananda. Oh, stop. It's not his fault. No, it's not his fault. It's the responsibility of the senior workers from PU. <laughs> Nothing to do with PU, you know. It's the chief secretary, PU, responsible. Haram Jada, where is he? Oh, he's not here, Baba. Oh, okay. Carry on next. Who's next? And then after that, they were all like, oh... Untouchable, Mr. Untouchable. Mm -hmm. I said, yes. Baba, little boy. You guys, remember it, okay? <laughs> did he uh, me? Yeah, he, he, he did it many times. And he did it not just with me, you know, with some other, um, uh, other Western workers too. And it was like he wanted, I mean, he was like boosting us up also in case we were feeling like left out and everything, mm. which we weren't, but anyway. But also he wanted to show their Indian workers that, look, it's not all about you, you know. Mm. I love everyone. You are all my sons and my daughters, so no one is like a up or down or whatever. It's for all of you. So it, he would make a point of that sometimes. And I can remember one. This is a really nice story, this one. It's, he, um, in that Jodhpur Park, Baba used to come in the morning, you know, from his, um, from Lake Gardens. So he'd come in the car in the morning, mm. like he's going to the office, you know, mm. and have all his pens in his pocket here and everything, <laughs> like his job or something, you know. I'm going to the office now. Oh, okay, all right. And um, 
and then the car would come down about, I don't know, 10 in the morning, whatever. It was always like a regular time, and we'd all be waiting there, you know, for Baba to come, and then Namaskar, and then Baba would come in and go up into the room, and then there'd be reporting, and then after that there'd be Darshan, and then he'd go home again, you know. And uh, and this, this, this would go on every day, and then after a while, when Baba got out of the car, and then there was a narrow path. He had to walk down straight like that and then turn to go up the steps to get... Because this uh, office was on the first floor and the ground floor was actually owned by someone else. It was, it was all rented, you know, so... Um, I had to get in that way. And as he came down that path, there was a spot at the end of the path to, before he turned to go inside the building to the sta internal stairs to get up, which was just big enough for two people to stand there, you know. And one Indian other told me about that spot. He said, look, see that before Baba came? And he, he told me, stand there and you can see Baba walk all the way towards you. Only you will see that and you can namaskar to Baba and be so close to Baba and he walks in and everything. So I told Navanil and Nanda who was there, we were both there because we both finished training. I said, come on, let's go and stand in this spot. So we went there and we stood in the spot. There's only room for two people, you know, really tired. Mm. So no one else can get in front of you or anywhere near you, you know. And then Baba came, comes down the path. So he's walking down the path towards you and he's just, you know, walking along there. And then he's nearly there and then you just say, Namaskar. And he has to respond. Mm. You know? So he looks up, Namaskar. And smile and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and then he turns, puts one foot up on the step next to us. So he turns, and his shoulders like that far away from you. Oh, you know? Yeah, so close. And um, and then he stopped. Mm. And then he just slowly turned around, and he's just looking at us. And he's so close to us, you know. His head is so close to us, and he's just looking and smiling. And then we were just like, oh, mm, yeah. this is just amazing. And then after a while, he still didn't say anything, and we started to think, dun, da, da. <laughs> <It's funny>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, And then I said, his smile stopped, you know. Mm. And then he said, last night, you weren't there at uh, MG quarters. And it's true, we didn't go. Usually, we went there every night for the um, field walk and kirtan and Prabhat Sangeet and everything. And it was fasting day, and we were really hot and whatever, and we just didn't go. And then um, he had this such a serious look, like a sad and serious mm. look, you know. And he was sort of shaking his head. Like that. And uh, he wouldn't look at us, you know. He was looking down and then mm, so, dejected. Yeah. And and we started. I started to say, oh, Baba, yes, it's, uh, fasting. You know. and Baba didn't want to hear any excuse. You know. And he looked up, and then he said, I think tonight you'll be there. <laughs> and we said, Of course, Baba, definitely, without a doubt, absolutely. Count on us. <laughs> and then he said, yeah, it's good, and a big smile. And then he said, and I think thereafter, every other night, you'll also be there, won't you? <laughs> and we said, yes, yes. And then a big smile, I said, ah, very good, very good, very good. Okay. And then went inside. Oh, it was just amazing, you know, because not only just to be so close, so physically intimate, but because... It's like uh, he showing you, look, see, I know you're not there. I know you didn't come. Mm. See, I miss you. You know, mm. you I should. Yeah, you should be there. When you're not there, I also I miss you. You know, so mm. you should come. You should come, because mm. I want to be there with you. you know? I brought you all the way to India. And... Yeah, and you know, he wasn't going to listen to any story about fasting or anything. <laughs> Just cut you off completely, you know. Mm. Oh yeah, back to that. My first session with the um, um, senior RDS, right? And after Baba had exempted Suva, said that it said, he said that oh, we've already done Suva, said that let's move on. And then he went through all the different sectors, and reporting was finished, and the deities had gone out, and um, 
There was one elderly Indian Dada and he was standing in front of Baba and I was speaking with, with him in, in some language, Indian language, not Hindi and not Bengali, I don't know what it was. But it was going on, you know, for a good 10, 15 minutes. And then I looked around the room and, and, and people, some people were meditating, other people were lying down, they were sleeping, and other little groups, little groups huddling there here and there, having a little gossip or a little talk. And I looked around and it just started to come in my mind that this is our senior RDS of a global organization. And if, you know, compare and contrast with um, other global organizations, what they might be doing at their senior RDS, I wasn't, you know, it's not that I expected Nanda Margaret to be like a, you know, um, a, ma a massive multinational organization or something like that. But it just came in my mind like that, and I was just, it's just an observation, really. And then all of a sudden, Baba stopped talking with this data, and he looked right at me and he said in English, What is this? A missionary organization or a lunatic asylum? <laughs> <laughs> I had to really bite my tongue. I wanted to burst out laughing, you know, and I, I just pretended that it wasn't directed at me, so I, did, I didn't have to reply. But what can you reply to that? You know, is, is, is it an either-or question or is it a bit of both? But I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> the latter, of yeah. course. Yeah, so uh, just so many things like that, you know. But I think my interaction with Baba has always been... Uh, just so blissful, you know, and just um, so intimate, and so you couldn't you couldn't um, request more. You couldn't you could never say, oh, I don't feel satisfied, or I'm a bit disappointed. No, you could never say that. You could I could never say that. Um, so yeah, just extremely blissful and extremely um, uh, eternally in debt you know, to him about that, and um, eternally in debt, yes. And, uh, yes, so... Um, so when when Baba did leave his body, it must have been devastating for you. Uh, it was really, really, yeah. I mean, it's difficult to, um, you know, when looking back, with hindsight, it's always easier to explain things. But at the time, it, it was totally unexpected. It shouldn't have been unexpected, but it was unexpected. It's just something we no one wanted to think about happening. Um, it's not like Pablo was particularly elderly or... I mean, he had had two heart attacks, and almost invariably a third one is fatal. Um, but we didn't really think too much about that. And there was a very distinctive uh, and gradual withdrawal process by Baba over time. When you'd come for RDS, he would, there would be less meetings, shorter meetings. Um, he'd be more withdrawn. He started wearing socks all the time. Um, and if you enjoyed looking at Baba's feet and ideating on his feet, that was frustrating and, and annoying and you sort of wondered why is he doing that and someone explained, oh, someone had given him some sandals and it had, it had been some, they didn't fit right or something had happened to the feet, but I, I didn't really buy that. And yeah, just different things, um, subtle things, but still no one could say, oh, yeah, I knew what was going to happen. No one, no one could say that because I don't think anyone wanted to think that, you know. So when you're leaving, of course, you you would have been aware that um, there's certain, I guess, repercussions or conditions. If you leave your charity ship, you can't have contact with another marga for so many years. And then once you're allowed back in, it's only as a marga. You know, I'm not negative about the organisation. I really hope that it goes on to become something outstanding. And um, But I also see that it plays a very spiritual role. Like, Baba coming here, he couldn't just put an ad in a newspaper and say, look, if you're interested in spiritual and accelerated spiritual life, call this phone number. So he created this organisation so vast in scope that whatever your samskara, social change, environment, intense spirituality, yoga, asanas, health, 
farming, education, whatever it is, there's scope in an Andamaga for you to come and get involved and express those samskaras and move very rapidly along an accelerated spiritual path, you know. So for me, that's a very large part of what the organization was all about and why Baba came here. Yeah. Ran, yeah. Ranjan, thank you very, very much for sharing that. It was very uh, inspiring hearing those stories that made me feel like I was there with him.